everybody. This is part two of the Intellivision vid of showing how to take one apart and basically what the innards look like and where the little plugs are inside for replacing parts like the entire controllers. Show you where those plug in and <laughs> show you that no, they're not soldered into the circuit board like a lot of sites seem to say on this thing. And then also where the power supply, which is internal on this, plugs in. Is in it's just got the old school power brick in there, and it just plugs into the motherboard. So that can be replaced too if you have one that does not power up. That's probably the thing is that that heated up and fried it. So I've already taken the screws out of the bottom of this, and let's see, there are six screws. So just carefully turn it over take all the screws out hold your controllers then flip it over and on the controllers for anybody who's never opened one of these up when you look inside the way they did it it looks like they are to where they are in there kind of permanent like anyways that piece of plastic where I'm hitting about right there that's a separate piece so basically just controllers out here. Usually just dangle them off the side a little bit. And then grab right here at the center after. <laughs> Almost forgot here. If you can, remove it. If you can't, just grab on a little bit more and taking the top off should remove it but anyways if you can pull off the little on off switch cover the other one is basically fastened to this so don't worry about the reset and then the whole top here as you can see just lifts off grab your controllers First, make sure they tangle around the goddamn electrical cord so you can break something. And just put them through the hole here. And right off the bat, I'm not going to detach these. If you're working on one of these, man, and the controllers don't work, if you haven't watched the first video of this, watch it. I take one apart and show you what to mess with. Once you've taken one apart, man, they're pretty freaking simple. It's just you got to be really, really careful. But I recommend taking them apart and cleaning the living hell out of them before you open this up and try and unplug them. Because once again, if you saw that video, the wires for the cord on the controllers are really fine and very easy to break one. But I will show you where they plug in if you do have one where the controllers are just crap and you want to buy new ones. So, get these kind of out of the way here. And, <laughs> it's been a while since I've opened one of these up, man. Well, I've, I've got my two good systems, which this is the first one I snagged out here. Then I got the one I got from my buddy Jim, which is the one I play on. And then I got one for parts. I thought the power brick was to the back of it, but no, that's your secondary circuit board, which has some really big circuits on it. And then the power brick sits up right towards the front. That's it right there. And basically that, you just unplug, so put this camera on hold here for a minute so I can move it right as you can see there is the power supply and I think I mentioned it in the other video I'm pretty sure I did but uh Again, I've seen replacement controllers, as in the controller with the cord attached on eBay, which once again, it's eBay. Have them send a nice big pic so you can really look that picture over good and make sure you're not getting something that's jacked up. If it looks shiny and you, usually it's something that you can mess with, but if it has any signs of wear, or the, especially if the cord here, as in it's coiled, has been stretched out, 
I wouldn't bother. Usually, the only reason these stretch out is from somebody having it on a TV with the cords hanging, or it's aged to where the wire's just gotten really bad, and then the rubberized coating here. Anyways, as you can see here, the wire's coming off front power supply, and oh, I forgot. <laughs> Like I say, it's been a while. Not only if you replace the power supply, do you get a new power supply and a new cord, you also get the on-off switch, as in that's all one piece. And that all plugs into this plug here, which you just pull out the same way you would if you're messing with the computer, and then just, you got two screws here, hex head, two screws there, two screws on the other end, and then this piece just lifts out. And let's see, hex head there, hex head there. Carefully take this piece out, and then you can get out the cord so you can pull that through the hole or whatever. And then you can replace that piece. Which, uh, I never had a problem with these, man, ever, on the power supply going out. I'm thinking it would be somebody that has accidentally left it on all night to where it just heats up and burns up. Because, uh, <laughs> I was saying in the last video that this was the system I grew up on. It wasn't television, but it was basically the Radio Shack version, which, that was Tandy Vision, and if I remember right, the only reason I got one is because we got it at the last little bit of its life, as in Radio Shack screwed up and basically copied in television, and basically all they changed was the name of it and the wood grain texture. As in, <laughs> it had wood grain texture on the top, too, where it said Tandy Vision instead of Intellivision. Other than that, identical. And I'd leave that thing on for hours and hours. And if it wasn't me, it was my nephews playing it. So, they are built good, but sometimes you'll get one to where that's fried. And if you're lucky, I think the last time I saw one of these, the price wasn't too bad. It's just, it's eBay and you're taking a chance. You're better off trying to find a video game store or somebody that sells retro game systems to where they work on them. So you have more of a chance that you know you're getting something that works other than just an individual person that's hacked up a system. Because it could be they just got a system, didn't work, so they just gutted it and selling it for parts and have no clue if anything works or not. So, it's again, man... The, I looked at the date this time. This is one of the original 1979 Intellivisions. This is the first one. and <laughs> Old enough, man, you're taking a chance. So unless it looks pretty, don't get it. So anyways, that's what that plugs in. And as you can see here, controller wire goes down there, kind of tucks in there, and there is where it plugs in. Like I say, really super fine wires and let's see how did I get that out of there now yeah, this it's a bit tedious once you take this off there's not too many screws holding in this piece it comes out real easy and I would do that but uh, I'm going to show you here the modification I had to do which now makes it a real pain to take that out <laughs> basically soldered the living hell out of it, busted into the freaking RF box because the RF thing was just twisting in place and it just tore it up inside and that's sticking out of ways because I tried it one way first and I didn't like it and then I got one and put it onto that piece so that's basically two pieces one female coaxial to male RF going into female RF or whatever man and then I just soldered it all together so it does not budge but as you can see because it's sticking out man it's trying to get that thing out of there at an angle as in a I didn't take it apart to do that that was before I had to take it apart so that was really fun Actually, I think I just, yeah, I just took the top off of it, and I didn't even take this out, man. 
That was before I really started working on any of these systems other than the Nintendo's, but if you got to take one apart, even to clean it, man, if it's all together, really easy. And if you're just cleaning it, you don't have to unplug these. Just be careful that you don't snap any wires, and it all just comes apart real easy to clean it up. And then right there, as you can see, that is where the other controller plugs in. And basically, the same type of plug as this for the controllers is just, as you can see, this one's nice and chunky. In fact, I can, yeah, I can pretty much pull that out with my fingers if I wanted to. Thicker wires, so if you're replacing the power supply, that's that's a simple freaking fix. But the controllers, I can't remember if I was able to do it this way with my fingers or if I had to use a pair of pliers or whatever to get a grip on them because dealing with a smaller part and they're stuck in there pretty good. So, not going to make this an insanely long video. This is as far as I'm going to go on this system because, <laughs> like a lot of people say, man, if it ain't broken, don't mess with it. <laughs> That's as far as I want to go because I don't want to break a wire. In fact, to tell you guys something that I did on the other one, which is now a Frankenstein system. See that right there? I took it apart and that was totally freaking brittle and that was just from cleaning it and I was being careful but it was so freaking just it had been rained on so everything had been just oxidized to where the plastic was brittle but that snapped what I ended up doing was cutting that off right at them leads and basically redoing that piece there with actual bare wire like this and then going to the motherboard which Got it to work for about 30 minutes and then it broke again. <laughs> so, I say it's a part system. And this here, that there may be something that goes to the power supply. I don't know. I don't know if that goes to the power supply or if it goes to the motherboard. That's another plug similar to this, just one wire. So, everything pretty much plugs in, man. <laughs> Just don't try and unplug that. Just only replace stuff on this if you absolutely know that it's broken. So, later again, and feel free to comment, everybody. <laughs>